politicians putting pressure on me to beg President Buhari Sunday Iboho. Welcome to the news and please subscribe to our channel. Iboho said some politicians have been pressurizing him and his wife to sign documents they could use to beg President Muhammad Buhari and his political circle on his behalf. Now the news in detail. Yoruba Nation agitator Sunday Adeye, more popularly known as Sunday Bo, has revealed that some political leaders are asking him to beg the presidency. Ibo said some politicians have been pressurizing him and his wife to sign documents they could use to beg President Muhammad Buhari and his political circles on his behalf. Speaking for his lawyer, Yomi Aliyu, the separatist agitator said any document claiming he authorized any politician was fake. In a statement signed by Lee Yu, Iboho said he was being pressured by politicians who were unconcerned about his incarceration in Benin Republic. The statement reads, We have been reliably informed that some politicians are pressurizing our client and his wife to give them endorsement to use at the presidency to justify their newfound love and or defection to the All Progressive Congress APC and or Cory affection from those in power. Let the whole world be aware, especially the presidency, that Sunday Adeyemo is totally apolitical with no special love or hatred for any political party as is he has friends in all. He, however, respects the six elected governors of a southwest state as authentic representatives of his Yoruba race, any document purportedly signed by Ibuho or his wife endorsing, empowering, or making anybody his mouthpiece other than his least counsel should be disregarded and taken as fake. It is disheartening and that a discredited politician with disreputable pedigree in Yoruba race and another retired security officer are pressurizing a client and his wife to give them endorsement to Yoruba youth and the presidency without considering his unlawful incarceration in the Republic of Benin and health issues. Ibuho was arrested at an airport in Kotonou and locked up in a prison facility in Benin Republic when attempting to jet out to Germany in July. He has fled Nigeria after the Department of State Services, DSS, declared him wanted. Ibuho was declared wanted after weapons were discovered in his Ibadan residence following an invasion by security operatives. He, however, denied ownership of the weapons. Wow. 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 Really. This is really happening. It is not enough that the government has infringed on the citizens' human rights. But politicians, not even minding this said person, okay, you're not even doing anything to get him out of detention, but you want him to stay there. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is laughable. Though it is very tragic. You want him to stay there, then you use his name to effect your cross captain to rationalize your cross captain that is already demonic. How do you expect somebody to be in soup? And you're using that particular person now for your own interest. You are not even assisting. Let me help you out of this. You are not even saying, oh, let us listen to this man. You're not using your good office or your stand as a political person to say, okay, let us bring out this man. No. You are saying you want him to stay there. He even has health issues. Then you want to use it for your own betterment. That is the height of, I mean, that is the height of selfishness and greediness. Are you, can you imagine? I am not comfortable where I am. I am very, very uncomfortable. In fact, my uncomfortability, if there's anything like that, has led to me having health issues. And now I need to be treated. And I cannot leave. And I've been stating this through my lawyers that I cannot leave. Then, all of a sudden, a politician comes and say, Oh, what will happen is you're going to make us this and that so that we are going to tell... Are you serious right now? 
these people now suffer. The thing is, <laughs> oh my goodness. They do not even want anything to do with you or your government. All they want. It is when you when the federal government calls in and say, oh, these people that have been agitating, come together, let's dialogue. That is when you receive them. Say, eh, hey. They do not want good. I've said it before. These people are agitating. They do not want gold. They do not want diamond. They do not want silver. They do not want bronze. Nothing. All they want is three things that broadens into other things. They want justice. They want fairness. They want equity. That is it. I tell you, this justice transcends into no more marginalization. No more oppression. No more intimidation. The fairness transcend into what is good in this region is good in the other. It is also equity. No nepotism. This person is my person. Okay, um, he's my person. So what will happen is, um, because I know I've known him for over the years and he has been very kind to me. This ministry of works does not have a minister now. Or the minister in question is about retiring. His time is... His time is far spent and he will soon leave the office. So that place will be soon be vacant. So let me use this office. Not in like that. This is what these people want. They do not want money. They do not want you. They don't know want any other thing apart from equity, fairness and justice. And of course, the government should be democratic in all sincerity. You cannot keep practicing dictatorship and you keep on your lips. You say... Nigeria is a democratic state. It is not done. You cannot say that it is a democratic state, yet the citizens' civil rights are being infringed on on a daily basis. Every day you go out and come back, you suffer what they call intimidation from people who are there to protect you. People who are there, they took an oath to protect lives and properties. You go outside, you're intimidated. Just you're applying just from here. You just left your house and you're driving from this place. to be, Even if you're not, you don't even need to drive. What am I saying? Just come out. Take a commercial bus. You will see oppression standing almost everywhere. It is not hiding. You will see intimidation. You will see the police telling you, I will shoot you and nothing will happen. That is it. And we have rule of law in this country. We claim to be in a democratic state. The so-called people that are supposed to protect the people. Every governor and every president of a nation, the security of the people should be his primary priority. It should be what should be. This thing is giving me sleepless nights. That is why it is alarming that even amidst all those things happening, the president is going to be going on a pilgrimage visit, first of all. Then secondly, for medical checkup. Is it right? All these things are lessons for the electorate to learn. Come 2023, you do not, you do not, by 2023, some people would have forgotten how it has been difficult and the bloodbath that have continuously been, blood has continuously been spilled. Some people will forget. They should not forget then. On this note, we have come to the end of the news. We say thank you for tuning in to listen. Until I come your way next time, enjoy the rest of the day.